Today, we'll take a look at an extremely impactful senior project concert that consisted of giving back to the youth of Columbus and to the local community. I just really wanted to give the concert experience to people and then obviously I wanted to give back to Girl Cheese Thursday. We'll also dive into the SAFE program and how it was beneficial for those wanting to learn more about self-defense. One of the things we get to do as a school resource officer is to uh, help give young people life skills and this is just one of the ways we do that. Mm -hmm. And we'll check out the latest in sports as well as the report on another successful Super Saturday. All that and more coming up on Torch TV. Yep. Good morning, East, and welcome to today's edition of Torch TV. I'm Lindsay Mellis, and alongside me is Alexander Wilson. How are you doing today, Lindsay? I'm doing pretty great today. Nice, nice. That's lovely. Now, let's get right into today's top story. Columbus, Indiana isn't a location you typically see on a music tour list, but thanks to one of students' senior project, East hosted a youth outreach concert featuring Colton Dixon to support a local ministry. Before students at North and East can graduate, all seniors must complete a senior project. My senior project is a youth outreach concert featuring Colton Dixon, um, and all the proceeds from my event go back into Girl Cheese Thursday, which is a youth outreach ministry that St. Peter's Lutheran Church does. It fit right along with St. Peter's and youth ministry, like our vision of we want more kids to get connected to Jesus, for her to lead that and for me to walk alongside and empower her, just it just seemed like a good fit. Choosing a project is half the battle, but for Ashlyn, the choice was easy. I really love concerts. They're like my favorite thing ever. I wanted to make it free for youth. That way it was like easy, no strings attached. You can like invite your friends. It's just something fun happening on a Saturday night in Columbus. Obviously I wanted to give back to Girl Cheese Thursday. I think it's an amazing ministry and it does the exact same thing that my concert is trying to do, which is provide a safe environment for youth to go with no strings attached. It will result in hopefully some more funding. Uh, grilled cheese is expensive every week for this many kids. But I think even more than that, that people in our community know that there's a place that cares about their teenagers. Choosing what artists would perform was more difficult, but Colton Dixon, a Christian country artist who debuted on season 11 of American Idol, stood out as the perfect choice. I didn't know who I wanted to get for my concert, and so I reached out to the Jeff Roberts, and I told them kind of a price range that I was looking at, and they sent me a list of like 20 different artists, and I just sat there that one night, and I just listened to every single song that every single artist wrote. I've got a really great booking agency, and every once in a while, they'll say, hey, are you interested in this gig, and give me a little bit of the backstory, and, and um, I can't say that I've ever done a show quite like this before. Um, really cool that, uh, that Ashlyn is putting this on um, as part of the senior project and as the show grew a little closer even in the last couple weeks um, that I got to find out about Grilled Cheese Thursday and um, someone asked me earlier today man what is what is the real reason you came to Indiana and that answer is grilled cheese much more goes into hosting a concert than what audiences see on the night of the event and Ashlyn put in many hours to make the night special for those who attended. I had never really thought about like the background of what goes into hosting a concert and like touring management. Um, if that's something you're into, go for it, but it's a lot of work. Um, and then getting sponsors was obviously a huge thing for my project because um, it's not cheap to host a concert. Ashlyn, one more time, let's give it up for Ashlyn. Come on. Job. I mean, she's had to be on phone calls with agency companies and um, production managers and management groups and marketing teams, uh, and she's handled all of them with class and with grace. Um, I love music. It is one thing that I just think helps everyone in so many different ways, and it brings people together. And I just want everyone to experience that, and that's just so fun. Thank you guys so much. Hope you have an amazing night. Thank you so much for coming. The event was sold out and ended up raising over $18,000, $5,000 of which went to Grilled Cheese Thursday. The East Food Pantry is open today from 3 to 3.30 and is located behind the library. The food pantry is for anyone who needs it. 
If you need assistance or are unable to make it to the pantry, please message Mrs. Romansky, Mrs. Gratz, or Mrs. Owens, and they will help you organize a plan that works best for you. Remember East, the food pantry is for you. As we reported last month, Mr. Mark Newell is leaving East. On Monday night, the, e the BCSC school board approved his replacement, officially hiring Dr. Michael Parsons as new principal of East High School. Dr. Parsons is, is coming from BCS Elementary School, Clifty Creek, where he served as a principal for six years. To Columbus East community, um, I know I may be a bit unknown, uh, but I look forward to getting known very soon with all of you. Um, I'm committed to relentlessly serving Columbus East and making the absolute best version of itself in academics, school activity, and school life. Last Friday, Special Olympics held their annual Polar Plunge. High school students from Central Indiana gathered at Eagle Creek Reservoir in Indianapolis to take part in the annual event. Each individual needed to raise at least $85 for Special Olympics in order to make the plunge. All proceeds go directly to training and competition opportunities for all Special Olympic athletes throughout Indiana. Uh, throughout Indiana. Although it was a cold and rainy day, the 16 schools that participated still found a way to enjoy the event. I have participated in the Polar Plunge for uh, four years now. And I do it to uh, help people that can't do things necessarily we can do. I would like to see, like, maybe possibly the whole school here someday. It was, it was cold. Very, very, very cold. When I was a kid, I didn't really have much life. And this gives other people a chance to actually express yourself and all that. Very good cause. One of the 18 different sites throughout the state and making Polar Plunge one of the Special Olympics' biggest fundraisers each year. In recent times, several school corporations have been concerned with the safety of their students and how to continue keeping them safe. An Indiana bill allowing for the arming of teachers has been proposed for this very purpose, but many C4 schools t continue to stress the importance of which they believe to be the most important thing in keeping students safe, school resource officers. Resource officer has a variety of roles. Um, their main role is obviously they're here for our safety. Um, but they're also here in an education capacity. They, they do a lot of teaching and instructing and working with students and families. There's a lot of bad press associated with police officers right now in the news. So it's good for students to see me and hopefully I bring a positive image to them as a police officer. Um, there's been several students here that I've been able to talk with and been, build really good relationships with that not being in the school I wouldn't have that opportunity. They, they are a wonderful resource for um, relationships with kids, getting ahead of problems before problems can happen. They are, they are tremendous resources and they need to be in your school. While Indiana schools are not required by law to employ school resource officers, BCSC currently has five SROs for the district. You know, the weather has been really weird recently. I hear you. It's been really cold and really warm, but luckily, we won't have to keep wondering what the upcoming weather is because Ben Likens is here in the studio to give us the three-day forecast. Thanks, Alex. This weekend in weather, today will be cloudy and windy with a high of 44 and a low of 29 degrees. Then heading into Saturday, it will be mostly cloudy for the day with a high of 48 and then a low of 34. Finally, on Sunday, we'll see some rain showers in the morning with the high for the day being 49 degrees and the low at 30. Thanks, Ben. Coming up, we'll take a look at the SAFE program and how it was beneficial for those wanting to learn more about self-defense. And this is one of, one of the things we get to do as a school resource officer is to uh, help give young people life skills. And this is just one of the ways we do that. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at the Student Assembly Volleyball Tournament that was recently held in the Orange Pit. It was match point, it was the last point of the game. We hit it over, I forget who, probably Luke Rice, uh, hit it, hit it, or Cadence, hit it directly towards Sophie Glick's face and we won the game. All that and more on Torch TV. That was a prompter. <laughs>
Cybersecurity is no joke. One bad decision can mean losing all your data to a scam on the internet. Here are some tips to protect your computer. Be aware of any link you find on the internet. Make sure the links you click on are from trustworthy sources. Make good passwords. While using the same password for many accounts does seem practical, setting complex passwords can make an account harder to crack. There are many more ways to protect your device, but these tips can get you started. Stay safe, Olympians. The SAFE event was held last week on Thursday and Friday. The program was made to teach students how to stay out of dangerous situations after high school and was very successful this year. East Media's Lydia Taylor joins us with more. Thanks, Lindsay. Standing for Situational Awareness for Every Day, the SAFE program aims to educate students going off to college about everyday threats and how to stay safe. Senior women were able to attend last Thursday for a full day class, while junior and senior men held their program for only half a day on Friday. Whether at a party with friends or just walking home on a dark night, there are many threats students might not be aware of as they head off to college. In 2015, we had a dad come to us and tell us, you know, my daughter's so smart. She's gotten what she needs from East High School academically, but he feared for her safety. So because of that and that dad's concern for his kid, the SAFE program was born. Columbus East's SAFE program is an all-day event where students are taught how to protect themselves after they leave high school. They learn how to identify suspicious behavior, how to avoid it, and how to defend themselves from unsafe situations. The SAFE program is basically a one-day crash course uh, for young people to teach them how to be safe whenever they go into the real world. It was created um, by our officers with the intent of just empowering young people to look out for themselves and just giving them tips to take to the road. Student participation was very high for the event, with students describing ways they already use to defend themselves and experiences they've had in the past. With several opportunities for discussion throughout the day, there were many chances for students to share what they had learned. Going off to college next year and potentially going out of state, I knew it would be good to have those kind of skills with me being in a new place with a lot of new people. So we've done a lot of learning about kind of different ways that we can keep ourselves safe, different ways we can be more aware of our surroundings, as well as just learning more about the laws surrounding sexual assault, just assault in general, so we can kind of be informed and know what to do in a situation. I learned a lot of new stuff about like watching your surroundings and what to do better and like environments where like you don't have a lot of people that can like help you. They like showed us more tools that you can use to defend yourself that like you could have on you whether it's like a metal water bottle or your keys because you might not always have like your pepper spray in like the bottom of your purse. We can be like open and honest about a lot of stuff that you don't normally talk about in school or even with parents necessarily and kind of talk candidly about our experiences as high schoolers. The Columbus Police Department and the Bartholomew County Sheriff's Office are very dedicated to keeping students educated for years to come. These positive experiences from students are what keep them coming back to do the program. We get really good feedback from it. No one's ever going to tell you it's a bad idea to better equip young people as they go off and leave our community and go to college and all these exciting things they're going into. While this is really good training and things that they will definitely take with them, don't stop here. Don't let this be where your learning stops you know, when it comes to keeping yourself safe. The Columbus Police Department has committed to hosting this program for years to come, expanding to other schools like North and inviting students from other schools outside of our area. How was the program developed? After parents were concerned for their children's safety after high school, the SROs at East developed this program from a book called The Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBecker. Specifically, the strategies they teach in the program come from the chapter Survival Signals. Come to the East Choir Room for show choir editions on Tuesday, March 21st, 6 to 8 p.m. and Thursday, March 23rd from 4 to 6 p.m. You can only attend one of the auditions. Wear comfortable clothes and active shoes to learn a short dance with the group. See Mr. Bud for help with your audition. The East Choirs will be selling fast uh, Easter programs starting grams, excuse me. Easter programs starting Monday, March 20th through Wednesday, March 29th during both lunches outside the bookstore. 
The cost is $1, cash only. If you want to purchase an Eastergram, please use the recipient's full name and know the advisory teacher's name and or room number. Last month, Student Assembly hosted a double elimination volleyball tournament. Over 10 teams from both North and East competed for $10 gift cards. Each team had a special theme such as White Lies, Blackout, and Ladybug. This year's tournament built on last year's success by cutting down the time between matches and providing more opportunities to play. Similar to other student assembly competitions, the volleyball tournament provided allowed a uh, sorry uh, provided a low stakes fun event. This is um, just to have fun and um, as like a student assembly group, like come together and. Um, just have a good time as East Olympians. We signed up because we wanted to have a good group bonding experience, um, have some fun playing volleyball with maybe not as experienced players. There was one time where I passed it and it hit my teammate straight in the face, um, but we still got the point, so it was pretty fun. It was match point. It was the last point of the game. We hit it over. I forget who, probably Luke Rice, uh, hit it, hit it, or Cadence hit it directly towards Sophie Glick's face and we won the game. Profits from the volleyball tournament will help fund the three-on-three uh, -three basketball tournament later this March. For the latest in East, East, East athletics, we head over to Jay Swidus with more. Last month, East hosted Super Saturday, an elementary school sporting event featuring all of BCSE's elementary schools. Oliver Carr has the story. Your Super Saturday cheer champions, your Schmidt Rockets! The announcement of the cheerleading champions is one of the highlights of Super Saturday. That one Saturday every February where BCSC elementary schools and their athletes come together to compete in both basketball and cheerleading. Our girls have given it their all this season. They've worked hard practicing and just running the routine. You can catch them at recess doing this routine in the hallways. They just genuinely love cheer and they really deserve this. I can't even describe how proud I am. They. They just work so hard. It, there's no words to describe how proud. I think it's just a big boost. It's a huge, um, I don't know, they should be very proud of themselves and I think they'll, they'll go far. For these young athletes, Super Saturday is the first opportunity to compete in front of a raucous crowd. That atmosphere creates an environment packed with energy and intensity. They just couldn't even comprehend the crowd that would be here, and I think they did great with them. They were very nervous, and we were too, but they, um, the adrenaline helped them out in the right way, and they did awesome. It was exciting. It's excited for the coaches and everything, and it's excited uh, for the players, and Richard has got a good fan base. The crowd was, eh, it was a little scary, but I was, it was fun to hear all of them. The Richards Raiders were able to complete a rare sweep by winning both the girls and boys EVL championships. The girls were able to battle back to win, avenging last year's heartbreaking defeat. A lot went into this. I mean, the open gyms uh, that we did before uh, the basketball season and everything, we actually started a little bit of practice last spring and quit over the summer and come back in the fall. And worked pretty hard at it and everything, and they knew what they had to do. They'd been here last year, and they knew what it was going to take to win it this year. It felt, it felt good. We lost last year, so I was excited that we won the championship this year. Congrats again to the Schmidt Rockets and Richard Raiders for winning Super Saturday. In women's basketball, Allison Craig and Heidi Murphy won Academic All-State, and Sage Stahl won MVP, All-State, and All-County. So congrats to all of our athletes. In gymnastics, Kami Warren won MVP, so congrats to her. For boys swimming, Brady Meyer was the conference champion and sectional champion and a state qualifier for the 500 meter freestyle and the 100th breadstroke. Misha Marvacani was the conference champion for 200 individual medley and 100 butterfly stroke. Great performance from our boys swimming team. The winter guard has also advanced to the state competition, so make sure to go out and support your O's. 
And now for the latest world news, here's Matthew Degner with the Matthew Minute. Welcome to this week's edition of the Matthew Minute, where news topics are presented in a brief format. I'm your host, Matthew Degner, and we're starting off by discussing Mexico. Four U.S. citizens have been kidnapped in an attack by armed gunmen. As of noon on Tuesday, two have been killed and one more is now in critical condition. Currently, the true reasoning for the visit and the attack is unknown. As Mexican President Andres Obrador stated Monday, the Americans were caught in a gunfight between two armed groups, which deferred from the account given by the sister of one of the victims. She stated that the group had traveled in order to receive plastic surgery and was ambushed in the street. Most of the time, America is very proactive about getting Americans out of hostile situations, so stay tuned and we will watch how this story develops. In U.S. news, New York Republicans are publicly calling for the resignation of U.S. Representative George Santos. Mr. Santos, a right-wing politician who has repeatedly lied to the public about matters such as where he attended high school, where he went to college, where he has worked, founding a charity, and his grandmother being a victim of the Holocaust. After the latter was found to be untrue, as he holds no Jewish heritage, he claimed that he had said he was Jewish and not Jewish. This is not all of his known lies, but a document containing the complete list can be found on the New York Intelligencer's website. After being elected on these now known to be fraudulent claims, six fellow New York Republicans are turning against Santos and are pushing for his resignation. This view is not popular across the party, however, as it would narrow the House's already tight Republican majority. In state news, Indiana Republicans are pushing for new ID rules in relation to mail-in voting. The proposed bill would require voters to include their driver's license number, their non-driver identification card number, the unique identifying number assigned to their voter registration, or the last four digits of their social security card number. A copy of any photo ID would also be sufficient under these new regulations. Democrats are saying this rule violates the unnecessary burden clause, but the Republicans argue that the large variety of submission options allows anyone to vote without hassle. Finally, in local news, a black and white pit mix was found tied to a tree, shot, and left to die in Hartsville. There are currently no suspects in the case, but the Humane Society have shared pictures of the collar and leash that were restraining the dog when it was killed. The organization has now released a public statement saying, quote, the Bartholomew County Sheriff's Office has taken a report on the dog that was found deceased in the Hartsville area. We are aware that the public has a concern about the treatment of this animal. Our initial investigation has not located an owner. This includes a sweep for a microchip. They also ask that if you have any information, please reach out to the police or the Humane Society. That's all we have time for, for today. From Alex, Lydia, Ben, Jace, and the rest of the Torch TV crew, I'm Lindsay Mellis, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to take care of yourself, others, and the place. And uh, as always, remember to be the best part of someone's day.